Let's look back in time before Ukraine was a country, or even just a part of the Soviet Union. Yes, the Scythians that once inhabited this area were pretty cool and all, but we're going to go back even further than 7th century BC, before these experts of mounted warfare roam the steppe of modern-day Ukraine. We're going to go all the way back to around 6000 BC to take a look at a group of people who not only built Europe's largest known Neolithic era settlements, but also are believed to be the ancestors of modern Slavs. These people are the Trapillian people. The landscape of modern-day Ukraine has been inhabited by humans for perhaps tens of thousands of years. Countless huts built from mammoth bones dating between 23,000 BC and 12,000 BC have been found all throughout this region. Even a village of them was discovered in central Ukraine. It is unknown if these Ice Age dwellers would stick around though. Over the next few thousand years, a new and much more advanced people started to emerge, the Kukateni Trapilia peoples more commonly known as the Trapillian people. It is in 1896 that a Czech-born Ukrainian archaeologist by the name of Vikenty Koika would become the first to discover the remains of the Trapillian people. This would be the first ever discovery and knowledge of these people that lived in these lands over five to 7,000 years ago. The discovery was made not too far from the village of Trapilia, which means three fields in Ukrainian. One of the most fascinating aspects of the Trapillian culture is that they were some of the earliest known people in the world to start building two-story homes. Archaeological evidence has indicated that these homes were burned roughly every 65 to 85 years before the Trapillian people would immigrate to a new region. This phenomenon in archaeology is known as burned house horizon. This concept is one that is heavily debated among scholars, with some claiming that the burned-down villages were accidental due to warfare or a simple misfortune. For those that advocate for this concept though, one theory they hold is that it would be used when a home would start deteriorating towards the end of its life. Another theory about burnt house horizon was that this technique was used for more ritualistic purposes before villagers would move to a newly established settlement. Some who advocate this theory go as far as to argue that the burning villages would represent the end of the life cycles of the dead elders who had built that village. None of the religious beliefs of the Trapillian people can be confirmed though, since not too much is known about their culture as a whole. Some of the settlements excavated contained sanctuaries in their centers, all which seemed to be intentionally buried for religious purposes. Excavated homes also contained religious figurines of goddesses or goddess-looking beings. These were likely totems in which the Trapillians may have believed imbued them with powers. We don't know the exact extent of who this goddess or these female goddesses were, but notable Lithuanian archaeologist Maria Gimbutas thought she had an idea. Gimbutas' theory was that the Trapillians were a matriarchal society that worshipped a Mother Earth-like goddess. This would greatly contrast to the warlike patriarchal Kurgan tribes that likely attributed to the downfall of the Trapillians, which we'll cover later on in the video. Gimbuta's theory is especially controversial when taking into account that she concluded that all of Neolithic Europe's tribes were predominantly matriarchal. This wouldn't be Maria Gimbutas' only controversial theory though. She had another, which is probably by far her most popular theory. This theory is known as the Kurgan Hypothesis. The Kurgan Hypothesis postulates that the Proto-Indo-European language that was spoken by the Kurgans, a group of nomadic herders and warriors that lived in the Far Eastern regions of Eastern Europe and Central Europe, was eventually spread to many other regions of Europe through the Kurgans' conquest of European tribes. And yes, this would include their eventual conquest of the peaceful Trapillian people. This Proto-Indo-European language spoken by the Kurgans is assumed to be the so-called parental or original language of languages such as Hellenic, Celtic, Italic, Balto-Slavic, Germanic, Hindu-Urdu, and Indo-Iranian. If, and that's if this video is well received, we will actually do a part 2 on ancient Ukraine and cover more on the Kurgan hypothesis and the Kurgan people overall. So please do make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to comment down below and let us know if you'd like to see part 2 covering the Kurgans. Anyways, 
While the language of the Trapillian people is already a controversial topic, it is even more of a controversial topic of written language being considered a part of the Trapillian society. It is widely accepted that the Sumerians created the first written language around 3300 BC, which slowly developed from a symbol-based language. In Sumerian society, pictographs were used for keeping track of inventory, especially with food. Gradually over time, these pictographs eventually developed into the first writing system in the world, known as cuneiform. The Drabilians had a mnemonic pictograph writing system like the early Sumerians, but it never developed into such a sophisticated system like the one that their Mesopotamian neighbors to the south had. These earlier, more pictographic styles of writing are known as proto-writing. The controversial Vinca script is another example of an early proto-writing that may be linked to the language that the Trapillians spoke. The Vinca script was used by the early Vinca culture, which was an early Neolithic culture based in southeastern Europe from around 5700 BC to 4500 BC. The people who produced this language, who are now based out of modern-day Bulgaria and Serbia, had created the earliest known form of writing in all of Europe even predating the Greek alphabet by several millennia. As far as the Trapillians are concerned, though, it is not for sure known whether or not this bears resemblance to their language or not. The Vinca culture was predominantly present within the regions of modern-day Serbia and Bulgaria, whereas the Trapillians were more centered around the modern-day Ukraine and Romania regions. As we previously mentioned, there is not much knowledge as to what exactly happened to the Trapillian people, but there is some evidence of these people being conquered by their Kurgan neighbors to the east. There are also several other theories, though, such as the climate playing a huge role in the demise of the Trapillians. With drastic changes in weather patterns during the late Neolithic period, this entire region experienced severe drought for a prolonged period of time, which eventually led to crop failures. Being heavily reliant upon agriculture, the inability to feed their people would have led to starvation and death resulting in the surviving Trapillians to migrate to nearby regions where they'd be forced to assimilate to a different culture. There is also a theory similar to this that advocates the possibility for the Trapillians not suffering a drought. Rather, they simply just migrated for the sole purpose of seeking better living standards and a greater abundance of resources. The absence of a great amount of Trapillian remains in the region and the presence of similar cultures in neighboring regions is what gives this theory more validity than the aforementioned one. Other theories point to the Trapillian people succumbing to internal conflicts. The massive size of their settlements and the hierarchical social structure may have led to power struggles and disagreements within their society. In fact, these internal conflicts could have left the Trapillians weak and vulnerable to external tribes such as the Kurgans. While there isn't enough evidence to back the claim of internal conflicts making them more vulnerable, the latter half of this theory, that being the Kurgans simply taking over the Trapillians through military conquest, may be much more plausible. Evidence such as the burning and destruction at Trapillian settlements as well as archaeological findings indicate the possibility of the Kurgans gradually taking over the Trapillians over time and forcing them to assimilate while coexisting with one another until Trapillian culture became extinct. With all of these uncertain theories in regards to the disappearances of the Trapillians, there's much debate as to what actually happened to them, even up to today. While this mystery has yet to be solved, there's one thing we can say about the Trapillians that is for certain. They were master innovators, known for their sophisticated agricultural practices, extensive trading networks, and distinctive ceramic artwork. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see a video on the Kurgan people after the disappearance of the Trapillians, comment down below and we will make an Ancient Ukraine Part 2. Also, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you also turn notifications on for our videos, as we will be doing giveaways for authentic ancient coins in the near future. In the meantime, we'll see you next time, only on Amateur Archaeology.